and let's just make sure Matt's cat doesn't, you know, fly off. Oh, don't worry, she's at the foot of the stairs now. <laughs> I don't know where the other one is. Ah, uh, he'll just pop up on the, he'll pop up on top of your computer and just go, hello! <laughs> like Mrs. Oh, Delphi. Like a nasty habit of sliding into stuff. <laughs> <laughs> right. This is the Immaterial Gamers podcast, which doesn't currently have a name yet. And if you thought I was actually joking that that wasn't the name, then uh, you're wrong. This podcast is being recorded on the 12th of August in the year of Someone's Lord 2018. In a week where we've had sunshine and rain and everything in between and other stuff. (laughs) <laughs> Shall we get round to introductions at some point? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Introductions. So I've actually managed to increase the amount of people I've had on a podcast over one week. So we've now got three people. So first up, we've got a Canadian. He's our Canadian. Well, he's one of two of our Canadians. He goes by the name Jeff Vader, but everyone else calls him Duncan. Hello, I'm Duncan. I'm from Canada. I'm the new kid in town. Yeah, new kid and is indeed from Canada. Uh, A second, we've got my uh, good old partner in crime, co-founder of Immaterial Gamers, and a janitor's best friend. It's Mott Bucket, it's Matt. Oh, hi. Hi there. It is me, your fearless leader. Uh, Co. Co Co-leader, yes. (laughs) Both of those words, fearless and leader, are debatable. (laughs) Hey! And third, we've got the guy that we all know as Darius, but everyone else knows as Darius. Hello, everyone. That's uh, a solid, uh, solid screen here. Yeah, this is always good. You know, this is just the easiest thing to do in, in role-playing games. If I don't have to think of a name and everyone else knows me or something, and if it's a good enough name to actually use exactly. anyway. Exactly. Yeah. That's my point of view. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, same order of business as last week. We'll go through some games that we've been playing. We'll have a look at some gaming news. And possibly other business at the end. Because I went through all the new releases last week. And didn't think about that. But, uh, yeah, we'll go for it. So, who wants to go first with what they've been playing? Uh, well, since I wasn't here last time, I guess I might as well update uh, people on what I've been doing. I uh, haven't played a whole lot of games recently, mostly because I was in uh, RTX last week, which is why I missed the first episode. Uh, but if I'm going to include things from before and after RTX, uh, I've been playing... Yep. Uh, mostly I've been playing a lot of Ark with uh, Stefan, who was on last time. Uh, we're currently trying to do a quote-unquote speed run through the game, where we try to get through the, all the bosses on all the maps. Uh, we've been playing for about a month, and we still have not summoned the first boss, so that gives you an idea of how fast a uh, game of Ark is. Yeah, I was about to say, this this, this speed run um, seems to be going... Well, I'd, I'd say in terms of art, that's probably actually going pretty well. Um, do you have plans to tell your offspring this story once it's all said and done? I, uh, I, I may do. Uh, we, we'll probably still be in the middle of it, to be perfectly honest. I may actually have to hire a babysitter to uh, take care of the kids while we work on uh, the last couple bosses. <laughs> oh, yes. I remember the day when we went from Island 1 to Island 2, and I went and picked up a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I have no idea if that's even possible, actually. Is it possible? Uh, I don't think you can actually pick up a Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can tame them just fine, but I don't think anything can actually, like, lift them. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Um, so you say you've had Ark. Yeah. And we, so we, we, we all know that. Yeah. Survival game. Just like every other survival game, except it's got dinosaurs. And that actually is its unique selling point, would you say? Uh, its unique selling points include dinosaurs, obvious, and also yep. the fact that you, if you don't play the game with, uh, if you don't play the game with any modifications, you legitimately need like a hundred people in different time zones to actually play it, because some things require like 
hours or even days of taming on at like real-time speeds so we've uh, heavily modified our server so that things move much more quickly than normal it's removed some of the challenge but eh, you know and you still haven't beat the first boss yeah you know it's actually legitimately gotten to a point where like uh, I would I get on and I'm like yeah I want to play Ark and then I'm get on and I'm like Oh wait, no, actually I just want to beat the boss, so then I tell Stefan, it's like, hey Stefan, let's fight the boss, and then he's like, okay, let's fight the boss. Oh wait, we need to do these seven things first. I'm like, okay, well you do that while I run in a circle and uh, wait for you, us to summon the boss. <laughs> uh, running in a circle, the Spirograph was always the best toy in the uh, 90s. God, I now feel old. <laughs> uh, well, I'll just shake that thought out of my head. Okay, what else do you got? Uh, let's see, what else have I been up to? Uh, re I've also just recently like the last two days for some reason i've decided i wanted to play civilization 5 some more uh just by myself i usually play that with stefan actually but uh i recently decided to want to play it by myself mm -hmm. it's like the ultimate power fantasy game you know where it's just like it's like i can have all the culture and all the military and all the religion and st just do whatever i want basically i play the game completely wrong of course you're really supposed to focus on like one type of victory but like I make yeah. very slow progress towards all the victory, which makes the game last like nine times longer. But it's way more fun that way. Yeah, <laughs> it's always it's always a good one. Um, I just I just know that there's always two things I've had when I've ever played Civilization. Is uh, number one, I have never finished a game. Mm -hmm. There's yeah, just yeah. something about it. It's just you know you you play and you get your mates to play it. Everything's great, and then you realise that you were the idiot that set it to the marathon setting so it means it's just going to go on for years so it's just you know one of those things but it's always fun starting 15 new games over your like 10 year lifespan yeah no kidding and the second yeah and the second thing i've got on that is uh fuck gandhi oh yeah, actually my play i'm playing gandhi right now <laughs> oh yeah uh so far i've only been involved in one war uh i took two of germany's cities uh and then he decided to be my friend after that no oh. That's actually quite a good way to go. Now, I just remember all the all the memes and the jokes about Gandhi and Civ Five, and just the the fact that he would sit there and offer his peace, and then would do the most unpassivist thing ever and just get the nukes. Yeah, yeah, it's just just the way. You know, I hope we come to peace and understanding. Right now, let me take your country before uh, I make it winter. Yeah, it's kind of like I'm, in a way. I'm almost glad that I got Gandhi because that's like I I just got that guy randomly. But uh, I'm kind of glad that I got him because I didn't really want to have to deal with uh, the nukes from an from an AI. <laughs> the bre the brutal dictator El Gandhi. Mm -hmm. Gandhius Maximus. <laughs> but to, but to your point about never fi about never finishing a game, I too I have only ever finished games that were timed. I've never actually fulfilled a win condition other than uh, time. Hmm just there's so much to do and you want to do it all and I know you like like you said you're just you know trying to narrow down one role yeah it's like I try it's like I sit down to say like oh I'm gonna do a military conquest I'm gonna do a quick game where I just kill all the other players and win automatically but then I'm like oh but culture buildings are nice and uh, I need to set up my production and oh having a strong economy is important because taking on extra cities makes it can be expensive and uh and then by the end of it, I'm just like, wait, what am I doing? I don't. I have two military units, and I don't know what I'm doing anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, just just having. I always used to just sit there. I, I do this with all four X games, though. Is I'll just sit there. I I know I suck in strategy and military planning, so I'll just sit there and just want to be everyone's friends while I let my science, you know, just build up in the background. Like I say, never see the fruits of my labor because I never finish a bloody game. So. While we've uh, been discussing Civ Five, there's been a marathon game going on in the back. Matt, what have you been playing? Well, for the most part, I've been playing Endless Space 2, which is oh. essentially Civ Five in space. Yeah, more <laughs> for I too have not finished the game yet. <laughs> Isn't there an actual <laughs> Civ Five in space, though? Yes, there is. Uh, <laughs> it is Civ is... Five. Uh, it's not Civ Five. Mm. Like Civilization Alpha Centauri or something like that, isn't it? Not quite. New well, Horizons kind of, or some garbage. Beyond Earth. Beyond Earth, that's, Earth, the, Earth, that's the one. That sounds right. I know it was Twitch. some generic space subtitle. Yeah. 
Twitch is another four X game I've yet to finish. Yep. But uh, no, I've been testing out the new DLC for Endless Space uh, Supremacy, which adds the uh, oh so fantastic Hisho to the game. Um, they had a nice new mechanic in where they don't really care about happiness because they're all on a bound lunatics <laughs> and they have something called key not spelt k e y or k uh, q u a y but k e i which bugger knows why they came up with that spelling but there you go um which is also one of your main resources and is an absolute pain in the ass to manage because to gain more quickly you have to get into battles to get into battles you need to build ships to build ships quickly you need to colonize to colonize you need to spend key and when you spend key your people become less loyal and then oh. shit hits the fan yeah we're sort of ma- resource management this was this was the thing with endless space wasn't it so the the the, mm. the core mechanic that they used to determine what sort of resources you had was fits yes in the first endless space which were what was that, was that food industry science or food industry dust science yes and then endless space 2 comes out and then they decided to go well, well let's make it fidzy yes fidzy which added influence was it yeah. to the end of that well um there's your yeah influence it's basically you use it for your diplomacy and that mm. And uh, whether or not you can actually ask for a peace treaty if you don't have enough influence no peace no peace you're screwed unless of course you are a warlike faction and really don't give a damn yeah and then you can start the game from the new yeah, uh, yeah. And the same same goes as every 4x game I know it's you know it's worth mentioning you know that every 4x game seems to do the same thing in its own unique way but Still, the oh, the common ground with all 4x games is you will find it hard to finish a game. Too hard sometimes, especially yeah. when one thing goes wrong and you think, oh, I can't be bothered going back several turns to fix it. So fuck it. New game. I yeah. will do it correctly and then do the same bloody mistake. Oh, uh, that brings us. I think that brings us back to our old 4x uh, exploits with um, Sword in the Stars, or Sword of the Stars, isn't it? Yes, Sword of the Stars. Yeah. We're not going to mention its uh, sequel because that's just a disaster. What sequel? There was only one. There was only ever the one game. And yes. it's expansions. Yes. And and uh, two words that would always kill a session every time we played it. AI Rebellion. Well, I kind of enjoyed the AI, Re- AI Rebellions. <clears throat> eh. It's just sometimes just a bit annoying. Oh, right, we're playing this five-player game. Oh no, who's this sixth player? Oh look, someone's AI rebelled. It's just another faction to go lay down some hurt on without causing any diplomatic distress. Hi for one, welcome our new AI overlords. Ah oh, yes, yes, firmware upgrade please. Right, what else have you got? Um, well, I've been trying out this hunt as well, this hunt showdown, while it's been on a free weekend. And mm. uh, I've got to say, it's, it's, it's not bad. Considering it's uh, pretty early on in its development, it's got one map, two bosses. Uh, I say two bosses, is four different ways you can do it. You could do one boss, the other boss, both bosses are random. Mm. Um, so you, you come up against eight to nine other hunters, bounty hunters, for these contracts uh, you can either be on your own or in a team hence eight or nine other hunters and your task is to collect your contract on whichever boss you want if you picked the butcher boss you have to go complete the bounty on the butcher before everyone else does now the the main issue is it's a mix of PvE and PvP so (laughs) the other eight nine hunters are going to murder you if you go for their bounty and they're nearby Mm. so the key is to get there first and get out first now there's a lot of obstacles in the way now there's this different terrain types it could be daytime nighttime or foggy i think the butcher is a daytime mission unless you do both where it's a nighttime 
and there are the undead are everywhere you've got your bog standard cleave wielding nut jobs which are pretty pretty basics you've got your fire wielding ones which are say similar but will torture you and when you're on fire it's not pleasant trust me i know uh, you've got the hives which are lopsided lunatics that send a horde of angry locusts at you which are not pleasant uh, you've got your big buggers which are slow but hurt and you've got yep. this weird armored guy that's dead skinny but he wears like what looks like half a beehive on his shoulders and a skirt and he's pretty clumsy too but you would not like those claws in your in your shins God, I'm just thinking of just a guy with half a beehive. Yeah, that's the closest thing I can describe to it. I don't really understand what he's wearing. There's no bees or anything. He just ambles around moaning at people. Uh... But you've got... The only other enemies that we've discovered so far are hellhounds as well, which aren't particularly tough, but they hurt and they're pretty fast. So they're, yeah. you, they're your baddies. And every single one of them is really bloody loud if you set them off, which triggers your location for other hunters. Mm -hmm. So you want to avoid them. But you've got other land obstacles as well. You've got broken glass, tin cans, you've got dangly tin cans on doorways. Uh, you run through water, you make quite a loud splash. You've mm. got dead horses on the ground if it's twitching don't go near it because it kicks off does the whole name issue can you beat a dead horse you can shoot a dead horse oh even better you try and beat it it's gonna kick off <laughs> <laughs> i just, just pictured the old idea of that. it's already dying um, yeah it's already dying let's beat it and the only other one is the crows and the crows if they see you nearby they'll start making a racket and if you go too close they fly off. And they fly off as a dead giveaway as to someone's around that area. Yeah. So. Are, are any of the crows called Russell? I could call one Russell. Fair enough. I'll go a brown one. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's been pretty interesting. It's much better as a team, but um, like we took on the spider boss and some poor guy had beat everyone to it. Hmm. Um and he banished it, you have to banish it first so it gives a timer and everyone can see where you are so you've got to try and defend your, your bounty and the poor bugger was trying to defend it on his own and both me and Adam had snuck up on him and he was not looking in our direction he was looking the opposite direction and oh, uh, no. yeah. so you didn't even see I was watching coming. him and I said to Adam, right, he, he's looking that way. He's like, right, where is he? I said, he's right in front of you. He just walked through the door. He's there. And instead of knifing him, he shot him with a loud shotgun. Oh, God. So we had to grab the bounty and run at this point, which once you get your bounty, you get this little night vision thing. You can see the other hunters for a short period of time, which is yeah. really useful, but it's also really short range. <laughs> So yeah, it's good though. Um, it's on sale at the moment. Um, mm. Not entirely sure for how long, but if it's anything it's... like the free weekends, it's usually for the duration of yeah. the weekend. It's on sale for another twenty-four hours, it's down to twenty pounds seventy-nine. It's not bad. I might actually pick it up myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Investigate. It's good. Fair dues. Right, so we've got those. Uh, we've got two people down. Two more to go. Darius, what have you been up to, my friend? Well, let's go back to the issue uh, with resetting the games every now and then when something goes wrong. XCOM Two. Ah yes, XCOM so, Two. Yeah. My 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 favourite and hated friend. Exactly. Same same thing here. Uh, it's ca the game can be really. You know, frustrating at some point, but on the other hand, you can really enjoy it when you're hitting, you know, this he headshots on the mm -hmm. aliens. So yeah, that's what I've been doing, trying to complete the campaign for the third time. No luck so far. Oh. Um. Apart from mm -hmm. this, I've been playing Heroes of the Storm. Oh, Heroes ah. of the Storm! I didn't know you played that. We should play sometime. 
Uh, well, I kind of like, I have like phases. Let's say I'm playing it for a month, then I'm quitting it for like a month or two. Mm. Uh, and right now I'm came back to it after a big huge revamp. Uh, the characters has changed so much that I basically have to learn every single one of them from the beginning. Hmm. Which, uh, yeah. which is it a little bit frustrating because I'm going into the game, I think I know what I'm doing, and five minutes later, right, nothing is working. So, yeah, that's that. Uh, and on top of these two games, I have a new game called Vampire. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw, saw that around the uh, the Steam store. I saw a couple of videos yeah. on sort of the gameplay of it. How is that going? Um. Well, actually, that depends what you're expecting. I didn't expect m expect much from the beginning, so for me, it's a really nice game. Mm. But I think from the um, information which I got beforehand was like they trying to s the the selling point was fighting, a lot of action. Yeah, there is not so much of it in the game. It's more, it's. You've got more story in the game, more like in Tay-Tay's game, let's say. Mm. So you've got lots of the story in it, and sometimes you do fighting. Yeah. And I, did, I did see that actually from like the, the videos I watched. It was just a case of it's a lot more conversational. Yes, it is. Sort of dialogue heavy than sort of other games of its type. So the the the, the videos which I saw beforehand, they were mm. mainly focused on action. So see, yeah, you've got maybe better better perception of the game than me. Uh, but yeah, I'm enjoying the game. It can be really hard, especially if you're trying to be a good guy. Mm. You are a good vampire who trying not to kill people, uh, and killing people gives you, gives you a lot of experience, which you can invest in your um, you know special perks, etc. So if you're trying to stay good, you're screwed. Literally. <laughs> Just like real life. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess I guess good, good guys don't get don't get high follower counts and become, you know, top leaders in governments. That's what I, I find this new good vampire thing such a weird thing. It's like vampires were bad guys for like a hundred years and now everyone's a good vampire now. It's like we don't eat humans, we <laughs> only eat pigs. Well, you you can you have you have the choice. You have the choice. It's all it's up to you whether you want to you know sack the whole town. Yeah. Or or not. Uh, but kind of the key for this game, I think, is to main because you have to also maintain uh, the wealth of the town. Mm -hmm. So if you maintain it really good, you're doing a really good job at it, then yes, you you can think, okay, I'm doing really good on this, so I can kill two people to get more experience. Oh, so that's kind of like you're like, oh, I, you know, I ate chicken and asparagus for dinner, so I'm going to have an Oreo for, for dessert, because I ironed it. Yeah, that, that, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what the feel of the game is, and I kind of like it. But still, I'm trying to be a good vampire at this at this playthrough. I'm still not finished the game. I think I'm like 70% into it. Okay. Darius uh, is a good vampire. Yeah. Well, trying to. I killed one person so far. <laughs> <laughs> Ethical blood sucking. It's the way to go. Yeah. And yeah, that's my three games which I've been playing recently. Fair dues. There we go. Well, um. Well, it comes around to me, and uh, yeah, I've been playing more WoW uh, so far, so first podcast. Um, I've also been getting back into playing Mafia 3. I played Ooh, a little bit of it Plus? on the... Sorry? PlayStation Plus? Uh, indeed, PlayStation Plus. Uh, it was on there. You know, a free game is a good game, no matter how... But it is. <laughs> you know, in any way you look at it, yeah. Um, and... Yeah, I'm, well, I'm playing it. I'm still encountering the same problem I had when I was on the PC, really, is that it really grips you in the story right at the beginning third of the game. And then the moment it becomes the revenge tale, just the, the core gameplay loop is just repetitive. Find, a, find a, a racket, dismantle it from the inside, kill or capture a dude. 
repeat and I know that I get to a point where it's sort of two thirds in right now you have to sit there and worry about who or which members of the mafia you're going to give the recently taken over bits to but it's still the same and I know I'm probably again not going to finish it but I'll try yeah I heard not so good things about Mafia 3 a lot of people complain about it yeah it's just I think I think compared to the other two Mafia games which did follow the story of a character through their insertion into this underworld lifestyle and then how they deal with it going forward it was you know it was great when you kind of get that all out of the way in the first third of the game and then you're told right go take over it just sort of reeks of rushed storytelling to be honest but you know might finish it it might blow me away with a revelation in the storyline but I doubt it and the other thing I've been playing particularly over the past couple of days is a game called Dauntless which is basically do you like an independent version of the Monster Hunter world game I have never played Monster Hunter oh, well, that's not true I played about 20 minutes of it on the 3DS uh, with my friend Jacob uh, mm. that's I sure I hope that's not like representative of the series as a whole. I I don't like that at all. Uh, for some reason, they decided that this game that's going to be this like fluid action RPG uh, is. They decided that they're not going to have like a camera lock feature. Instead, they're just going to have like, a camera snap feature where you know you push a button and it points you in the direction of the enemy. But the moment the enemy moves, like you're just free freestyling again, and it's just like. You know, the enemies are constantly moving. Your attacks are kind of slow depending on your weapons. Your hitbox is not as large as you would hope it to be. It's it's just not it's just not intuitive. Mm. Yeah. You know, it's funny you actually say that because it seems to be the design f- philosophy that is indicative of all these monster hunting games because Dauntless is exactly the same. You you know, it is a case of grab some ingredients with a party of people, track down and kill a giant monster. And again, yeah, it's the same. It's like, we'll give you oversized weaponry to give you the feeling of taking on a big creature, but it's lumbering, uh, you know, it's lumbering weapons. With the exception in Dauntless of a pair of, like, chain blades. So it's just like mini scythes. It's the one really fast weapon in a game of big, beefy bludgeoning in slicey stuff. Can you lock onto enemies? No, this is this is this is where I say that sort of the design problem is indicative of the sort of genre of games because again it's the same thing. You push one key, which in in the game is unbound, it's just like the well it's binding is the R key. And yeah, you'll just snap focus on the big mob. But again, like you say, the moment you the moment it sidesteps out of the way or you have to dodge, you've lost focus of the creature again. Ugh. And and I know that probably the justification of this is, is to try and just make sure that your character's you know, not derply walking to and from a mob and then just getting hit all the time. It just needs a bit of improvement. I mean, I mean with Dauntless itself, it's, you know, it's got the, the sort of the, the monster hunting parts down. It's in, it is a, an independent project, though. It's from a company called Phoenix Labs. Currently, uh, the access isn't it? Yes, yeah, so it's in its it's in its open beta phase now. Um, I did give it another shot, or I did give it another try of it a few months back when it was in a uh, closed alpha state. Um, but yeah, it's it's improved a lot since then. Well, I Boys. suppose you could always suggest that they put in a extra toggle key to focus on. Mm. the behemoth in question but personally I, I, I wouldn't like to be locked onto the boss because I have a horrible habit of not being aware of what's behind me and I more, would more than once fall off a cliff yeah I mean that's that's the thing I guess <clears throat> sort of the the contrast and opinion to that for these for these types of games is you don't want to be in a fixed position you come yeah. up against creatures that Especially in you know in Monster Hunter and Dauntless in general, they yeah they have set attack patterns, but they're generally a bit unstable, yeah. erratic. You, 
you don't want to be in a situation where you can just, like I say, dirtle up to it and just go, hi, I'm going to swing a sword at you. But, yeah, it, maybe maybe giving people the option is... Yeah, well, this this is where a separate toggle button would be useful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, you compare it to, like, another, like, 3D action uh, game, kind of, you know, like Kingdom Hearts, for example, you know, they have that lock-on feature. But in addition to the lock-on feature, they also have kind of, like, a soft lock where, like, you're kind of pointing in the direction of the enemy uh you'll get like a soft lock where you'll kind well you'll kind of be directed towards the enemy as you attack but like as soon as they move out of the way or you move too or like you know too strongly you'll you'll break lock and you can you're free again and then you have the option to hard lock onto that enemy which tracks them until they like teleport or become intangible or something like that i think yeah. that would you know that's a good way of handling the 3d action game but you know that's just my opinion. Yeah, no, no. It's, yeah, like I say, it's a sort of design that you should be you should be looking to design for, you know, a a big audience. You know, I know that there's like you don't want to do the jack of all trades and every man it, but yeah, give give people choice and like actual choice, not loot box choice. But yeah, um, other than those two games, and wow. Which I don't really think counts as a game anymore. It's just more of a uh, a choice. It's a way of life, damn it. Yeah. Yes, a way of life. Which you know that way of life is going to change a little bit in what, four days' time. Three, four, three. Is that the new expansion yeah. that's coming it out? Is, yeah, it is indeed. Battle for Razoroth. Oh shit, Mike! We here, finally you annihilate the alliance. Yeah, and the and the alliance try to annihilate the horde. I say try. Horde is eternal. Horde we are is Horde. Life. For the Horde. And all that business. Right, that looks to be a lot of games that we've discussed and nearly two thirds of the podcast discussed on them. So let's have a look at a couple of pieces of gaming related news. And the big one was the one that happened this week. <laughs> Ah, uh, jeez. What it's like to be a big games media publication and not realising that one of the writers that you've hired is a big plagiarising cockend. Yeah, I read about that article. Yeah, that's not great. Yeah, so yeah. this is the news that gaming website IGN had had to take down a review of a video game uh, by a YouTuber become journalist. Um, due to the fact that it shared striking similarities with a smaller YouTuber's review of the game, to a point where it was almost word for word. Yeah, it's like, you know, uh, one guy, I, I read about the article and I, I saw some comments that were like, uh, you know, you can't really prove that it's plagiarism based on this one thing because it's like, there's a lot of generic language, it's hard to really pin it down, but it's like, even if you ignore, like, the coincidences for, like, the one review that was, like, the headliner of the article, it's like they also mm-hmm. pulled up a bunch of other instances where the same writer had also, like, copied other reviews and similarly, similar languages used, but also similarly, like, like, definitely, they're all, essentially I'm saying that they're all made in very much the same style, or it's like... Yeah. You know, it's like a slight alteration of the original dialogue. It's like, okay, you can do that one time on a game that has, you know, where there's not much to say about this game, and, you know, not, it's not necessarily plagiarism at that point, but when you have a record of doing similarly copy-ish reviews, it's like, okay, there's clearly something going on here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that was that was the thing, wasn't it? So the, there was the first one for the game Dead Cells, which, you know, there was this, the reviewer by the name of Oh, I'm going to get this so wrong. Philip Mucin? Mucin? Philip. Yeah, and, you know, this was almost taken point for point from a YouTube channel called Boomstick Gaming. Which, when I Which heard that, I, th- I thought that was, like, Boomstick from, like, the Screw Attack Death Battle show. I was like, I was like wow, they, he does game reviews now. That's neat. I yeah, was like, nah. no, no, just to, totally just unrelated. find that the guy's a... And in, yeah, a completely unrelated person, but also with an awesome name of a channel, um, who has actually, as you know, the the irony of this is that by you know, him trying to 
explain to people why this guy had copied all his work. He's now got a hell of a lot more subscribers on YouTube since, so I guess, yeah. I guess that's a Weed out the shit. Right? Work for him. Bring out the diamonds. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, the fact that... So this this had happened, and then a second review come up where the guy was reviewing... the Philip was reviewing um, FIFA 18, and um, Nintendo Life had come up and gone, um, you're copying our work. It's just, the, the guy seems to have had a track record of doing it. Calls out a Kotaku journalist on it saying, yeah, well if you can if you can find some evidence, you know, pull it out there. Within hours. Hold my beer. <laughs> yep, it was. It was a proper hold my beer moment because within hours someone had tipped off to him that there was a third review. Um the game eludes me, but yeah, again, almost word for word. And I think it was someone in the comments section of Kotaku who had turned around and said, it, yeah, it's almost like the guy had just decided Right, that's a nice paragraph. I'm just going to change a few of the words around, and please just wait a minute while I get a thesaurus. <laughs> Google, what other words can I use for this? Yeah. I like that one, it's a long word. We'll put that in. Yeah, al- alternative words for my. It's literally the kind of thing you would do in like high school or college, and like you borrow your notes off of a friend or classmate, yeah. and then you just change some words around, uh, except yeah. that you do it without their permission, and you make money for doing it. So... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, is the 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 you know the awkward situation of yeah trying to you know having to justify the fact that you are a massive cheat, to which he did what a lot of people who get caught these days do, and that's release a, a non-apology video. Mm. Oh, was there was there an update of him actually like releasing a statement? The uh, the article had said I thought the article had said that he hadn't released a statement, but he's got something now. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, he did. He did a monetized video. Um, oh, good. Which was uh, which was an apology in giant finger quotes. And that's when he called out. Um, I'm gonna get this guy's name wrong again. The Kotaku guy, Jason Jason Shreer, um, called him out and said, "Yeah, try and find evidence of me, you know, plagiarizing," which they did. And now the review's gone. Uh, the video's now gone down. So yeah, I think nice to see that worked the out well. Original review on their site as well, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, they had to they had to take that down. I think they've either redone it or are in the process of redoing it with mm-hmm. someone with a bit more um what's the word? Respect. Originality. Yeah, yeah, respect for the medium. Yeah. Credibility, there we go. Gone are the days where you could do your assignment in the back of a taxi on your way to said place. Yeah. Uh, on that note, I'm not entirely sure how this monetization works and if you are allowed to do what I'm going to say. So, for example, yes, if you're writing a review, fair enough. Yeah. And if you are using some somebody else's work, can you just can quote it uh, based on based on IGN review. And it's like would it's like, that fix the problem? It's like yes. it, I mean, you kind of it's like citations are always good, you know, Going back to the source is always good. Generally speaking, it's considered proper etiquette to, you know, ask the person if you can use their material or quote them in a review. You know, as long as you have some kind of citation back to the original, it's usually okay. But, you know, it's it's generally professional courtesy where it's like if you're going to use this person's idea or, or intellectual property of any kind, whether it's a review or whatever... You know, it's good to be like, hey, I liked your thing. I like the way you said this. Uh, I probably couldn't have said it by myself. Hey, why don't can I uh, use this in my review? I, you know, I'll, I'll give you credit, give you shout out, whatever. You know. Yeah. yeah, which you know, which is the complete opposite to what he actually did do, which is basically go, oh, shiny, that looks like a nice review. Uh, he forgot to do his Harvard referencing. Yeah, Harvard referencing. He forgot to do any referencing. Yeah, you know, oh, it, well, this all this whole thing is like. I, I always, I'm afraid of having my friend Jacob involved in this <clears throat> series at all because I always, get, I'm always afraid that he secretly uses uh, people's reviews in the same way that this guy does. I, I, he, I don't know. He, he is, he's the kind of person who would like, and this is okay in just a regular conversation between two people. But like he's the kind of person who like reads an article or two articles and like his opinion then becomes the opinion of that article and like he'll like 
use language in those articles <laughs> to like help explain his opinion. Yeah, and it's like he tries to do this secretly using sources that unknown. But every once in a while, mm. I'll like find his source, you know, like I'll figure out where he's getting this information, and I'll like read it or listen to it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's exactly what Jacob said. That's not an original opinion at all. Yeah, uh, we 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 kind of have that with a uh, with the UK tabloids that you can really wipe your ass on half the time. But it's just when someone says in a in a in a media piece an anonymous source, I don't like it. But um, yeah, so we'll try our best to not plagiarize anything. In fact, really want to intend on doing that. But uh, speaking of other news, uh, or taking stuff from other news and adding our own spin on it, particularly in terms of bike riding, who heard about the story of the Taiwanese granddad who plays 11 versions of Pokemon Go on his phone at I, the same time? I had a chance to read that article before we uh, started the, the podcast. And... Uh, uh, I have mixed opinions on this. <laughs> <laughs> on one hand, oh my little god! Little on one hand, it's kind of like, oh, this is really cool that this old grandpa guy is really into this Pokemon Go. That's kind of a cute story. Uh, the article does just barely graze over the part where it mentions that he spends uh, like about thirteen hundred dollars U.S. equivalent on this game every <laughs> month, and it's like it just is like one sentence mention. It's like okay, but seriously though, this is a cool story. Um, it's like, uh, excuse me, that's a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, this is the this is a, a Taiwanese man called Chen Sanyuan, who has got a he's got his bike set up that he can have eleven smartphones playing Pokemon Go at the same time. Now, according to the article by the BBC, it says that he plans to add another four. So that's fifteen v- uh, games of Pokemon Go on his bike, and he's now known as Uncle Pokemon. Uncle Pokemon. His, uh, loca- yep, in his local community. Step up your um, game, Professor Oak. <laughs> yeah, yeah you've got no- nothing. You've got nothing on Mr. Chen. Professor Oak's Taiwanese cousin. <laughs> Professor Oak, three starter Pokemon. Well, what is this? Is it like to- Top Gear? So is it, yeah, he's not the professor, but he's the professor's Taiwanese cousin. <laughs> oh, hold on my beer. <laughs> I bet soon he will catch them all. Yeah, everyone. Was it, uh, it's like it's like everyone's always like, "Oh my god, Pokemon Go! It fucking drains my battery so badly. I can't even play the game for more than one hour." And he's like, "Hold my beer." <laughs> no, he's like, "Hold my phones, kids." These hold days. my phone. My bike is my battery. You rack yeah, discipline. I mean, <laughs> you see, you see, I consider, I consider laughing a bit more about this, but it's just the fact. It then you know, so like you said, he mentions the very quick bit where it says he spends more than a thousand pounds or. 1,290 US dollars I'm going to assume on the habit and then it comes down to it, it's, it's just like he says the game has helped him to make friends and to fend off Alzheimer's disease and I'm like oh well that's a bit depressing now I mean did, <laughs> does he know that Alzheimer's is coming like did he feel it encroaching he's like no I must do something <laughs> it's a bit back, like Game of Thrones back you go Dots is like you're going to have Alzheimer's Pikachu I choose you <laughs> oh Jesus off yours Alzheimer's <laughs> it was super effective Hey, I mean, look, he's yeah, he's he's big in his it's community. He's 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 well known. He does what he does. You know, I'm I'm sitting there thinking about the fact that I got bankrupt if I have one phone. He's got fourteen more than me. Oh please, when I'm his age, I'm gonna have twenty hooked up. Yeah, what does he do exactly? Fourteen smartphones, all those batteries, and he's paying he's paying spending thirteen hundred dollars a month on Pokemon Go. Well, what does he do I bet, exactly? I he's bet I bet he's retired at the moment. He, yeah, he's in, got his the view, in his view, in his view, you earn a lot of money, and he's just blasting them out right now on Pokemon. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe he hates all of his next of kin, and he's trying to burn all of his like his state as quickly yeah. as possible, <laughs> so that there'd be nothing <laughs> left when when he passes away. And uh, and to my grandchildren, I give you my smartphone with Pikachu. 400 Pokemon captured. Yeah. <laughs> It's like my yeah, third they're... son's second daughter will get uh, smartphones uh, seven and six. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I do. I do love the fact that it says at the end though that the game has faced criticism. Yeah, it has, with suggestions that Pokemon Go increases the risk of death or injury through distraction. Yeah, this was the point that when actually when Pokemon Go first came out, they refused to put Poker Stops in dual carriageways, and for good reason. 
Just picturing people just crossing a busy road with cars going by at 60 miles an hour. Yeah, it's like it's like Pokemon Go reduces your chances, or or, or so rather, it increases your chances of dying in you know accidents uh, in you know urban areas, but apparently reduces your chances of dying of Alzheimer's according to this guy. Yeah. Oh, so well, interesting I mean, trade-off. Yeah, you take you take one for the other. I mean, I'd just love to see how he rides around on this bike and just having his phone just on. Or his bike just shudder violently because eleven phones have all gone off and vibrated at exactly the same time. It's because he's got some uh, decent shock absorbers with that one grand he spends a month. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, he never says what he spends the. It says that he spends it on his habit. How much money does does his bike cost? I wonder. Did he like even bother with a good bike? It's like it's like I spend. You know, fifteen thousand dollars on smartphones, but my bike cost twenty-five dollars at a garage sale. Yeah, well, maybe that's what it is. Maybe he's actually trading up. Well, to be fair, a lot of the stuff over there is cheaper. So, for the same amount sure. of money over here, you could get a smartphone. Whereas yeah. he's probably like, right, here's a grand. Give me all the smartphones in the shop, and they go, oh, okay. Here, have them all. Yeah. Just oh god, gotta buy them all. Yeah. Poképhone. <laughs> Gotta buy a more Poképhone. It's just all Samsung. And then a few iOS phones just for, for, for good measure. <laughs> yeah, I'm just never going to shake that feeling. I'm not going to shake that feeling out of it that I'm probably going to get outdone in a game of Pokémon Go by a by a Taiwanese man with 15 phones on his bike. You need they to see me rolling. They hate it. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Mm. I... Don't even, I don't even know where we can go from there. I mean, we can have a look at this very, very quick last story about Destiny 2, for anyone who might be interested. This might be the part yeah. where I bow I haven't played Destiny in a long time. I beat the campaign and I'm like, ugh, I'm done. Yeah. I'm loving that this, this news piece that, that, that Stefan had given me before the start of this states, and you know, from Kotaku UK that says, Bungie has shared a ton of new information about how progression and currencies will work in Destiny. And the news piece is, Bungie shared the information, check their blog. Oh, so it's basically just like a re... It's basically like the blog equivalent of a retweet? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it says tokens are going away. Couldn't be bothered like... writing our own review, so we put this one on instead. You know you how we were news? like... The, how we started the news section off with uh, an article about how somebody just completely stole somebody's work and didn't give any citations. Is this the opposite of that? Is this the inverse <laughs> of that? This Where it's is like how you we just you, work work all you all you do is you know all you do is give a citation and that's it. The citation is the the <laughs> article. <laughs> is that that at that point is basically a press statement, isn't it? It's just like please, please check this news. We sacked our own reviewer. Please go to their site for more information. No, Kotaku's actually got a lot of people, you know. And so far, none of them have actually stole shit, so, you know. That we know of. That yeah. we know of. Perhaps we'll be you reporting know on Kotaku right one now, day. Every Reddit person is looking through every single post cross referencing with YouTube, like, we will find one. We will shut mm. this one down. I mean, I'm looking now because, you know, I've done what I've done. I've clicked through. I found this bungee news piece that says what they're going to be doing with uh, Forsaken. Oh look, the cha the changing weapon types. We already know that. Uh, there's going to be an end game destination. Again. Yeah. You'll discover the dreaming city in for Destiny 2 Forsaken. Cool. What about it? You're going to have to be buy the game. Do you want to hype up a little bit just to let us know? No, we have like to a, buy the like game. A, it's like a non-article. It's just like, it's an article with no information in it. It's a farticle. <laughs> Well, this is worse. This is actually Bungie's blog that I've gone through to now. It's because the price tag is the hype. It's 70 yeah. quid, buy it! Ah, like, uh, yeah, uh, but while we're at that point, um, quick correction on that. I said that Destiny 2 was going to be £69.75 on the Humble Store. I was wrong, it was £62.99, but still. £62, that's like uh, 1500 Canadian dollars. <laughs> <laughs> The exchange rate's not doing you well there, yeah? Yeah, uh, it's Canadian dollar still sucks. Quick update. Okay, good to, good to know. Um, That's the financial uh, part of this podcast taken care of. Canada yep, still sucks. Right yep, so for business news, if you please go to immaterialgamers.com slash business, you'll find an empty page, because like hell have I got the time for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So we are actually running at 54 minutes. 
on this recording, so I think that it's time for us to well, wrap up. If you don't mind, I can take two more minutes to make it to sixty. <laughs> you just oh, we'll just we'll just stay here for two minutes. Just well, vamp for a couple minutes. I've got I've got I've got yeah. two interesting um, news anyway, kind of last minute. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, I had a thing. So too. it's more it. like from my point of view, it's more hardware. Okay. Then actual game. So first of all, have you guys seen, noticed that there will be a new PlayStation 4 Pro version, which is limited only to 50,000 pieces. It's, uh, yeah, is, it's is clean, this like blue plas- clear blue plastic, mm-hmm. so you can you can see the insides of it. Uh, this is this is the one to celebrate the like the 500 million yes, units. Exactly. And. Looks okay, however, not for me. It's I, I prefer either the jet black or uh, the red Spider-Man logo type on it. Yeah. Oh god, do you remember that? With the, P- with the PlayStation 3 was basically the same font as Spider-Man. Yeah. I mean, uh, you could definitely tell it was Sony. My god, I never put it together, but now that you say that, I was like, oh my god, you're right. Yeah. And another news which I do have is... GeForce is going to have a conference this week where they probably will announce the new graphic cards. Oh yeah. And they what they planning? To, well, what the assumption is, they trying to get rid of GTX brand and rename it for RTX, which basically will stand for ray tracking. Okay. Because ideally they supposed to be the first graphic cards which can do ray tracking in real time so you don't have to wait hours to process the image for movies so that's RTX. what I'm that's what I'm really looking forward to to have m- even more realistic graphic in real time RTX, yep, that's, that's copyright infringement well, <laughs> get them <laughs> <laughs> we can debate we can debate on this next week yeah certainly have a look at that and yeah, see where we go because when they say that conference, what is that going to just run all through the week or they just no? There is one one day during the week. I don't remember the exact date right now. Uh, uh, I think it's yeah, either, by, it's by either this time next week it should yeah, have been done though. Exactly. It's, I think it's Wednesday or Thursday, one of these two. Oh, okay. No worries. I also had uh, one thing. It's the only news that I had actually written down. Uh, yeah. f- uh, I know that a bunch of us are Rooster Teeth fans uh you yep. you know various members of this group uh, uh ruby Gr- grim eclipse which is which was the first uh game released by rooster teeth games based on the uh web series ruby uh is getting yep. a major update apparently uh don't have a specific date for it yet i don't believe but um essentially they're coming out with a new horde mode map uh they're gonna have a new campaign mode uh, a new, an entirely new game mode that they haven't said anything specific about, uh, and uh, all of that is going to be free with an existing purchase that is valid prior to the DLC coming out. So anyone who has bought or plans to buy the game before the DLC comes out uh, will get that all of that content free. Sorted. I have to actually go back and play that again at some point because I did actually like sort of the the way they were going with it, this sort of four player action RPG hack and slash. Yeah, I was thinking that maybe we could uh pull together a, a team of four or however big of team we can get and uh maybe play it together once the DLC comes out. Yeah. Be fun. Definitely. Have to go back on that one. And uh I'll say re replay it. And uh yeah, has anyone else got anything News wise, before we wrap up again, I think that's it for today. Sorted, no worries. Well, I'm gonna, you know, sort of wrap this podcast up with my own introduction because I cannot believe it. I forgot to introduce myself again. All right, well, you're gonna have some editing to do then. Yeah, yeah, no, so that, that'd be great. So, yeah, uh, my name is Ryan, otherwise known as Not Him Again, and you have been listening to the Immaterial Gamers podcast which doesn't uh, currently have a name yet name pending uh, uh, well you know maybe i should actually just change it just call it the immaterial gamers podcast name pending actually you know the ig podcast yeah 
Yeah, but more, that will uh, have more gaming news, games we're playing, and immaterial gamers naming conventions next week. So until then, we will see you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, and Matt's gone. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not gone.